Hi, Northern Knights. I just love discovering new books, and when I came across this next story, I knew it would be a perfect book for our nighttime stories. This book is called Doe, Knights, and Dragons. It was written by Dee Leon and illustrated by George Amos. And you may have noticed that we have a special little visitor tonight. <laughs> Macy really likes uh, bedtime stories too, so she's going to join us for nighttime stories. In a magical kingdom far to the east lived a very small knight and a very large beast. One day while collecting fresh herbs in a glen, the young knight discovered a well-hidden den. It was filled with ingredients he'd not seen before. The lad couldn't resist. He just had to explore. In the blink of an eye, he filled a large vat with a little of this and a little of that. The pleasing aroma of hot savory stew woke a shape in the dark that soon came into view. The knight jumped in fright and feared he'd been caught, but the beast stopped to drink from the simmering pot. This soup is delicious. Can't you stay, please? We'll cook and we'll dine and we'll share recipes. There was something sincere in the dragon's appeal, so the knight ceased to think that he'd become a hot meal. The unlikely pair learned that they both liked to bake. They made sea serpent cookies and unicorn cake. They created tall castles with sugar and spice and stirred up huge helpings of pixie dust rice. But in that great kingdom, far to the east, Friendship was outlawed between knight and beast. When the knight came of age, he was bound by a rule to spear a winged beast in a challenging duel. And a dragon was also required to fight, commanded by edict to swallow a knight. The upcoming match filled the friends with great fear, for both were required to take part that year. I won't spear a dragon, the knight said. I can't. I won't eat a knight, said the dragon. I shan't. They cooked and they baked and they made a big mess. Five plates of dessert didn't lessen their stress. On the eve of the contest, they had lots to do. They were bound and determined to bake something new. So they mixed and they measured, they kneaded and rolled. Then they cut out shapes with a circular mold. They knew this creation could well be their last and anxiously worked just a little too fast. They deep fried the dough in a kettle of oil. The dragon's hot breath brought it all to a boil. The knight speared a shape that resembled a beast. Then he took a small bite. Oh, what a feast. The puffy dessert was both scrumptious and hot, but it also gave rise to an interesting thought. I must pierce a dragon with my sword of steel, but the law doesn't state that the beast must be real. And I'm required to swallow a knight. If he's made of dough, shouldn't that be all right? So they melted some armor, quite shiny and bright, for a cast of a dragon in one of a night. They mixed sugar and flour, shortening in yeast, from the dough they created each night and each beast. Exhausted, they pushed the scraps into a heap, washed their hands, brushed their teeth, and fell quickly asleep. Subjects came the next day from land, sea, and air to see how each knight and each dragon would fare. When asked who'd go first, the two friends volunteered. The spectators rose, waved their banners, and cheered. The worried contestants stepped onto the field. Then the knight dropped his sword and laid down his shield. He'll be burnt to a crisp, all the people exclaimed. We'll win this first round, every dragon proclaimed. But the beast didn't aim at the small, helpless knight. 
Instead, he set all the cooking alight. The dragon king fumed and the royal king thundered. What's going on? The shock spectators wondered. When the dough nights were done, the beast swallowed a few, then proceeded to cook all the other shapes too. The knight pierced his sword through a dragon with wings. Then he and the beast humbly bowed to the kings. I speared a winged beast, as the law states, my sire, and I ate a knight cooked with dragon breath fire. We don't understand why we always must fight. We made these together. Please, take a bite. So the dough knights and dragons were given a taste. The kings ate them all. Not one went to waste. Because of the heroes, all dueling was banned and all kinds of friendship soon spread through the land. Henceforth, competitions between dragons and knights consisted of bake-offs and festive food fights. The end. I hope that you all enjoyed tonight's story, and we hope that you all keep checking in to hear more nighttime stories. We miss you all so much, and we just can't wait to see you.